Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, I'm going to continue talking about the transform orientations, specifically normal and gimbal. But before we get into these, I want to talk about uh, one thing that I forgot to mention in our previous transform orientation video for global and local, and that is that when you constrain an object to an axis, it will go with the default orientation and then uh, a secondary one. So what I mean by that is if we rotate this on the y-axis 45 degrees, or just rotate it 45 in general, uh, and then we were to switch to the local axis, and let's say move along the x-axis, right? Now we're constrained to the local x-axis because that's our transform orientation. But if we were to hit G and then X and then X again, now we're locked to the global orientation. And then if we were to hit X one more time, we're actually freed from any object constraints, so it can move freely around in our scene. All right, now I just wanted to point that out. We will undo that rotation. And now we are ready to talk about the normal transform orientation. Now, when I choose the normal transform orientation, nothing happens with our axes. It doesn't change anything. And that's because objects themselves don't have normals. Normals are specific to mesh objects. And so we're going to need to switch to our modeling workspace to do that. And so let's go ahead and do that. And then we can see what normals are all about. All right, now when we switch into our modeling workspace, we have everything selected. And so even though we have our normal transform orientation turned on, we actually don't notice any change in the transform orientation of the move tool. But what actually happens in the normal transform orientation is that the Z axis on our move tool will match the normal vector of what we have selected. So let's show what I mean by that. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna turn on our normals. So we go up to overlays and then click the normals option for faces, just so we can see these. And you can see that now there are blue lines coming off each face in different directions. So if instead of selecting an entire um, cube, let's just select this one face. And now you can see that the Z axis has aligned itself with the normal for that face and it's rotated the Y axis and X axis to match that new Z rotation. Same thing, if we click over here, now it's rotating along normals. Now we've actually seen this in action with the extrude along normals tool. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put a card up in the top at this point, uh, just to link you to that video if you wanna see that new tool that's um, come in with the extrude settings. And that's how it works with faces, but what about with um, edges or vertices? So with edges or vertices, you actually get some different representation. So we can see that if we vertex select here, uh, the Z axis is pointing along a dark blue line that's representing the uh, edge, that's representing the vertex orientation of its normal. And if we wanted to move that along its normal, we could pull and then it would just pull it away. If we were to select the edge, now you can see that the Z axis is aligned with the correct orientation for that edge. And it will just go ahead and kind of split the difference between uh, the two vertices that it's got on either side of it. So since this one goes out at a 45 degree and this one comes out at a 45 degree, the Z axis here just kind of matches them and goes straight out at that 45 degree angle. All right, now that's basically the normal transform orientation. So let's go back to object mode and talk about the gimbal. Now the gimbal tool works similarly to the local transform orientation. However, it uses a rotation mode, which you can change and set in the viewport properties panel by bringing up the, or by pressing the N key and bring that up and then clicking on the rotation mode. And I just want to show you the default because going into this is a little bit advanced for the basics of mesh modeling course that this video is going in. But if we were to rotate this along the Z axis, what you'll note is now, since we've rotated on the Z, the local Y and X axes have actually changed. And that's just an Euler representation of that. And so now you can see that they are in a new position. If we rotate this along the X, uh, nothing happens rotate along the Y, the X axis has now changed. And that has to do with Euler calculations, which like I said, is a little bit more advanced and maybe we'll do a video on Euler angles in the future. But for now, uh, that's basically 
the gimbal tool. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I will see you in the next video where we finish up the other two transform orientations.